This morning, we count more than 2,000 cases in Australia. Tens of thousands of people will lose their jobs. Plenty of businesses forced to close their doors. Say 10 people together outside in a group. That's not OK. All food courts will be takeaway only, Alex, so expect those queues at Centrelink to become just that much longer. I'm Mark Kimveg and I'm the owner of Blackboard Varsity in Varsity Lakes, Gold Coast. Come that sort of Saturday afternoon, um, the hype had got to a point where everyone had started to panic a little bit. Um, the, the concern in the community was starting to grow with what was happening in the country. Um, and so by, by Sunday afternoon, you know, we, had a, we probably had our worst Sunday ever. Uh, we probably like fifth doing, you know, under 50% of what we'd normally do on a Sunday. Um, and then that Sunday night was basically the PM on the TV telling us that uh, he was shutting down pretty much the whole country at that point. Um, and then we'd only be able to do takeaway service and hospitality. Um, and so that was, that was a really tough night. Um, you know, a lot of emotions going through your head about what you're going to do with your staff. You know, the, the thought of going from 25 staff to possibly four staff and having to have those conversations was really tough. Um, not only that, but, you know, you think about nine years of business could be done and out the window because do you have enough to survive or what's the future look like that Monday morning was like really humble and we had a huge amount of people like way more than what we'd normally have on a Monday people coming down to just buy stuff to have brekkie to you know share I guess grief at that point and um, I think that that, that day we, it was definitely um, you know a feeling of grief more than anything. I think that fight or flight mode hadn't quite kicked in yet. It was definitely a grieving process and um, we had to get rid of a lot of staff that day and um, <coughs> all our locals were down here supporting us and um, you know putting an arm around our shoulder and and doing what what they could for us that day and um, obviously from there from there we did the um, free meal for hospitality workers later that week. Um, obviously we've been in hospitality a long time and know um, the pitfalls of hospitality and how hard it's going to be for a lot of the people who, um, you know, who were being made redundant that week and, you know, there was thousands of them on the coast and um, even more obviously around the country. So that was something that was really nice, the, you know, the community really jumped on board. It was buy a meal, we'd give a meal and um, we managed to do, you know, well over 150 meals in a day, um, which was awesome. It was nice to give something back. And from there, you know, along the way, our community just kept coming and kept supporting every single day and buying things that they normally wouldn't buy. You know, the people who always just bought a coffee were then buying something from the cabinet or something from the kitchen. And after about a week, there was this, like, whole new group of people who we never really saw before that had decided that it was or I look at it this way that they decided that it was almost their responsibility to help carry us through you know the, the, the months that were ahead and so I guess these people who would normally be at work when we were open maybe they go to work in Brizzy and commute all of a sudden found themselves at home every day and we became part of their daily routine, coming down for breakfast, and we'd see them again at lunchtime, and um, and it was really nice. And we we managed to make really strong new relationships with lots of people, and um, the community the community support still blows me away. You know, I think you know we've been here nine years now, and um, we've kind of made it a, a mission to to give back to the community, um, to, to constantly be doing stuff inside the community, to be, um, to be seen as people who aren't here to take, you know, we've never been a transactional business. We always wanted to be transformational and always wanted to make people feel like this was somewhere that they wanted to be uh, and wanted to keep coming back to and that they knew that in 
hard times that we'd be here for them too. And I guess that kind of sounds silly because we're just a cafe, but I think that you know our goal and all the staff that work here genuinely care about every single person that they make a relationship with that comes into the business. And so I think that um, you know we're we're pretty open people. Like people know about my family and they know about the staff members' family, and I think that you know they did all they could to you know to give back to us. I think I want to thank everyone, everyone that um, has ever come through this door. I think that um, a lot of people um, probably won't understand how much our customers mean to us. Um, you know, it's something that I find very special that um, people choose to come here every day, every week. This is where they want to, you know, this is where they want to spend their time with the people that they want to see. And, um, we never take that for granted and um, I probably, you know, say thank you a thousand times a day and like it's, it's genuine, it's, it's genuine like everyone who comes in here feels like a family member, they're supportive of my family, I want to support their family and give them something to smile about and um, you know our suppliers were awesome all the way through, the communication was good, you know we paid them every single week because they were doing it tough too and like those relationships, both internally and externally, whether it's customers or suppliers, um, is something that I value, and I understand that everyone has a, a mouth to feed, and, and so we'll always do our best for, for everyone. So I feel blessed, and the staff feel blessed, and um, it's, a, it's a special place, and special to be a part of it.